assume they will put something right there just waiting to see if everything's going to happen. They'll do that as well. Yeah. They're just not letting us do that right now. Um, Wszystkich serdecznie witam tutaj, którzy przyszli na spotkanie z przyszłym, tak myślę, Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Poliver. I mamy ten zaszczyt w ogóle, że przyjechał do nas tutaj i się spotkał z Państwem. Bardzo serdecznie wszystkich witam i dziękuję za przybycie. Chciałem również powitać tutaj przyszłą, znaczy naszą member of parliament, Tracy. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Tracy Gray. I'm the Member of Parliament for Kelowna Lake Country. Jane, Jane, it is so incredible to be here. Thank you so much for being here today. Pierre Polyev is the leader of Canada's Conservatives. And he wants to restore Canada, the Honourable Pierre Polyev. Thank you very much, Tracy. Jen Gobre. Thank you very much to Michael, Conrad, and uh, who else is here that's helped from the Wojtek, where is he? There he is. Thank you very much from the veterans, uh, the Polish Veterans uh, Association and the Polish Congress and the incredible members of the community who are here today to celebrate the shared conservative and Polish values of faith, family, and freedom. Yes. You know, these are the values that built this country, the pillars upon which uh, Canada was forged and built, and the reason why so many millions of people came from around the world to call this place home. Uh, many of uh, Canada's Polish community came here to escape communism, to take control of their lives, make decisions for themselves, raise their families, and earn a living in peace and without oppression from the state. And Canada was the perfect, perfect place to do that because this was a country whose real nationality, in the words of Wilfrid Laurier, was freedom itself. It was that freedom that gave me the chance as the adopted son of two school teachers to rise to a future prime minister. It's the, thank you very much. It's that freedom that brought my wife here as a refugee from what later became a communist country, that is Venezuela, a country that was the wealthiest in the entire Americas, but now the poorest because of communism. All of these stories are really, at their essence, the same. It is a, it is a, it is a, a nation of people who bound themselves together based on the ancient traditions of freedom that gave us everything we have. Unfortunately, we see those freedoms under attack today by a prime minister who wants to concentrate all the power in his own hands and in the hands of a small group of aristocratic elites around him. They want to control your money, your thoughts, your speech, to lower gas, heat, and grocery bills. We will cap spending and cut waste in order to balance the budget so we can bring down inflation and interest rates. We'll get rid of the $35 billion infrastructure bank which hasn't completed a single project eight year, sorry, six years after it was created. We'll get rid of the $52 million Arrive Can app that didn't work, that we didn't need, and could have been designed in two, in two days by a couple of IT workers. We will get rid of the billion dollar so-called Green Fund, which ultimately is, has turned itself into a cash for nothing program to help liberal insiders. We'll stop sending our money away in foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies and bring that money home for our military instead. We'll cut back on the 
one billion dollars that Canada's government now spends on consultants. That's a hundred percent increase that works out to fourteen hundred dollars for every family in Canada paying taxes for federal consultants alone. We'll cut back on that number and bring the work inside the bureaucracy. The bureaucrats are paid to do the work. We shouldn't be contracting it out for five thousand dollars a day to insiders and consultants. We can save that money. And we can use the savings to balance our budget and lower our tax burden, including lowering income taxes, so that hard work actually pays off again. And you bring home more of each dollar you earn. Speaking of bringing home, we need more homes to bring our paychecks to. The reason costs have risen so much is because we have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. And that is because we have the second slowest building permits of any country in the OECD. In fact, the cost of permits, zoning, <coughs> consultants, development charges, taxes, lawyers, all add up to $1.3 million for each newly built home in Vancouver, according to a CD Howe study. In other words, in Vancouver, the number one cost is not land, labor, or lumber. Rather, it is government. Now, a lot of these costs are local and provincial, but the federal government does give a lot of money to the provincial and municipal governments. We give $5 billion in federal infrastructure money to the cities. The city politicians care about more, more about that than anything else. So my common sense plan to get them to cut back on their bureaucracy is to link the dollars we give the cities to the number of homes they allow to be completed. I'll require cities permit 15% more homes per year, or they will lose federal money. Those that beat the target will get a building bonus. We will pay our cities and our city bureaucracies the way that realtors get paid, on commission, on the number of homes that get done. We'll require every federally funded transit station be permitted for high density sky rises so that young people and seniors can light, live right next to the bus or train. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. We'll get rid of the carbon tax and the cost of shipping the materials for building and we'll require CMHC approved financing for new apartments within two months rather than two years and we'll put it in the law that if the executives don't hit that two month turnaround time, they will be fired because that's what happens in the real world. So we're gonna actually get the bureaucracy out of the way and get the homes built so that our, our young people can once again afford to put a roof overhead. And those homes will be in safe neighborhoods. The catch and release Justin Trudeau criminal justice system has allowed the same tiny group of reoffenders to do immense damage to our communities while paying no price themselves. They're not even afraid to get caught anymore because they know they will be released. According to the BC Union of Mayors, the same 40 offenders were arrested 6,000 times in one year in Vancouver alone. And catch and release bail passed in Bill C-71 allows violent offenders to get released often within hours of their arrest. Many times police will tell you they're not even done the paperwork by the time
the lineup just over here. You'll see the direction that Pierre is going. And the lineup it will go around this way. So if you wanted to line up, it will go towards the back of the room, around the back, and then up to the front. Thank you very much, everyone. Warto było przyjść, nie? To jest mój, mój horst, ja go obstawiam, nie? No pewnie, że tak. Nie? A ja ciebie puszczę z moim mężem. Dobrze. 